Good morning everyone, it's time to catch up with all the Street Fighter V news and there actually is quite a bit even though we didn't get much new information for E3 but it's time to catch up so let's get started. First, Balrog gameplay info. So an interview named Steven Klickner from VentureBeat had a really short hands-on experience with Balrog, just like a couple of minutes but we got some uh, key information on what we can expect from the character even though he will be playable in story mode at the end of this month. So first off, he's still a charge character. Um, no surprise there. We were kind of worried though that Capcom would change things around, but word on the street is that he does have one move that is not a charge move. I think it's like Core Circle Back Punch or something, but we don't know what it is. Anyways, his normals still have decent speed and decent range, and his normals, like what they look like animation-wise, is uh, very similar to his Street Fighter 4 counterpart. Um, he seems very fast uh, movement speed-wise, like he's really fast on his feet, so that's really good to know too, especially since he is a charge character. Um, his animations look really, really good. If you guys seen that really short uh, clip that we got from Event Hubs from uh, Dream King, uh, where you can see Barog do his V skill a couple of times, like his animations look really, really nice. And I really like the his default costume that they gave him because it really gets to show off those like Street Fighter V animations. So I think it looks really good. Um, of course, if you guys want to see that clip yourself, you can check out in the video description below for uh, links. And I'll be saying that a lot in this video, guys. So just make sure you guys check the description for a bunch of links. Um, they say that, or Peter Comelfine has quoted that uh, Balrog is a less jabby version of Balrog. So he will be less, you know, turtling and just mashing that crushing light punch because we know it was insane in Street Fighter 4. I think it was like 3 frame startup, 2 frame active, and like plus 4 on block. It was it was nuts. But his, his crouching light punch seems uh, slower in Street Fighter 5. It doesn't seem as crazy, which is worth noting, of course. Um, you can still buffer the crouching light punch into specials, though. So it still will be part of probably of his bread and butter. Uh, Buffalo Headbutt is apparently gone, uh, which is uh, really interesting, but it seems like his V-Skill kind of compensates for that because, you know, Borg's Buffalo Headbutt was used to get past projectiles, link into his Ultra, which would be a Super in Street Fighter V, and it really it's like his main mobility option. So, um, Balrog losing his Buffalo Headbutt, I'm pretty sure they gave him something to compensate for that, so really interesting there. Uh, it also would be kind of redundant if his V-Skill goes through projectiles, and then he also has his Headbutt as well. Um, Still has turnaround punch, uh, you just hold down two punches or two kicks and then release. So no surprises there, he still has his dash straight which is charge back, press forward punch, his dash upper which is charge back, forward kick, um, his dash low straight which is charge back, uh, yeah charge back and then down forward punch. Uh, we don't know if he have his, his overhead punch which is charge back and then uh, down forward punch, hold punch. Uh, we don't know if he has that. Um, v skill. Seems to be looking like something like a spinning dodge when you just press uh, the mediums by itself. Uh, he just kind of weaves and spins around as you can see in that clip that Dream King posted. Um, I would, like, no doubt in my mind that it would be used to go through projectiles of course. We don't know if it dodges attacks or well, at least I don't know. I'm sure someone will correct me on that. But also you can follow up the spin by pressing punch which will do a straight punch. So it'll kind of be turned into like a, a turnaround punch and if you press kick during his V scale he'll do an uppercut. Uh, really, really interesting. Um, everyone kind of guessed that his V skill would be uh, a turnaround punch, but it seems like he has both that and his V skill. So um, for him being able to like do that spinning while moving forward uh, seems to make him seem uh, really aggressive, which is nice because we want Balrog to be aggressive in Street Fighter Five. We don't uh, like most people like his Street Fighter Two counterpart and not his Street Fighter Four one. Um, v trigger is a passive time V trigger that apparently apparently buffs his specials in some way, but we need more information we honestly don't know. Uh, I'm sure it would be buffing something else, but just so you guys know, you activate it, there's a timer, and he's buffed up in some way, shape, or form, similar to Bison, Chun-Li, etc. Um, also, we have very short Balrog footage, it's basically just like a cutscene or two, um, just like from his story mode uh, thing. Uh, Born Free, he's at E3. He recorded a bunch of stuff on his Twitter, so be sure to check out his Twitter. I'll provide the link to his Twitter in the video description below, and you can check out a bunch of really clips. And once again, his animations look really, really good. And he's buffed up, man. Like, uh, Balrog's huge in Street Fighter V, like, you know, most characters are. And, uh, yeah, like I said, just really, really short clips of him. Um, apparently, like, he wasn't supposed to see the footage or something, and they, they only had, like, a 10-minute timer to play story mode in Street Fighter V, and that's more, around the time where you get to actually play as Balrog. So it's really funny that he got those clips for us. So shout out to Born Free. Um, story mode details, just really quick details on story mode, what you guys are going to get into. Uh, one round matches, uh, which uh, might suck for some of us because if we want to play Yuri and Balrog 
or Jerry, for example, we're going to want to play more than one round, but it seems to be just one round matches. Uh, most, for the most part, cutscenes, like four minutes of cutscenes and then uh, just one round match and then back to like a bunch of cutscenes. Um, you can't choose your character, it's all just like one mode basically. And then of course remember when you beat story mode the first time you get a harder setting afterwards. Apparently uh, the default AI for, um, for story mode is really bad, uh, the computer sucks. No surprise there, just like uh, the story mode that we have now. Um, story mode will also be in one giant arc, so we won't have like chapters or anything like that. We'll just like continue from where we left off kind of thing. So it's supposed to be really long too. I think it was like about three hours from what I last remember. In other news, Japanese fans are salty about the removal of the Zeni money system. Um, this is kind of funny, but also kind of bad at the same time. Uh, so basically, special edition copies of Street Fighter V in Japan, a couple of them provided Zeni money. Uh, when you, that came with the game, that's like part of the thing that you you purchased. Uh, some as high as like 1,000 zenny, which is quite a bit. That's enough for I'd say two premium costumes. So you know you get your like 10 bucks worth of zenny. And they also gave out a bunch of coupon codes for different events and other things that happened in Japan. That also gave people zenny when you uh, submitted the code. They're in the PSN store or whatever. And then people, Japanese players have been sitting with zenny money in the main menu. For Street Fighter V since launch for a really long time, and now finally this premium costume is going to be available, and then now the Zenny money is scrapped. So the Zenny is worthless now because we'll be purchasing all of our uh, real money stuff with just real money in the PSN store or the Steam store if you have the PC versions. So for compensation, Capcom has been giving these fans uh, they'll be re only be receiving fight money for their Zenny as compensation. So one Zenny equals 200 fight money and then that's how they'll be compensated. Um, obviously you cannot purchase premium costumes with fight money at all. You have to use real money now and the Zenny money system is gone. So of course they're really salty about this. This sucks because you know, yes we get fight money but we obviously you wanna spend this stuff on the premium costumes. That'd be the most important thing. Cause fight money you can just grind it out, right? So um, we've been like people have been posting pictures of Smash Street Fighter Five discs. Shit, man, stay free. It's just, uh, yeah, that 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 sucks, man. Um, totally understandable, and uh, I, I I didn't even think about that too when Capcom announced that they abolished the Zenny Money system. But uh, yeah, man, they said for reasons uh, they just <laughs> they can't fix it. Basically, Capcom said so. Now the money system's out, and people got screwed over for it. So yeah. Also, alternate versions of stages were playable during E3 for Street Fighter V, including Nighttime Forgotten Waterfall, which is called the Mysterious Cove for some reason, um, Nighttime Shadowloo Base, which is called Shadowloo's Base at Night, and then of course we already know about the Daytime Kanzuki Estate, which is called Estate at Noon. Um, these new, just keep in mind that new stages cost 70k fight money, but what I just said, these are the alternate stages and these will cost us 40k fight money each, so assuming that we get these three alternate stages uh, in the June update, it will set us back for 120k fight money. So like I said guys, we're going to be running out of fight money soon, man. Don't think you guys have too much because it's going to rack up. It's going to rack up, man. Um, the nighttime stages, uh, you can take a look at it. Born Free has been posting tweets with them as well, and you can kind of get like a, a sneak preview, just really small video clips and screenshots, but they look pretty cool. Um, I'll be purchasing them myself because, you know, it's just an excuse for more stages, basically. And then hopefully Capcom will be adding more of the transitions to the sta stages on the left and right eventually. Because we already know from like looking at story mode that the, the bank opens up with the vault room. And then we know like on the left side of the waterfall stage is where like Nash uh, breaks out the coffin. And you know, there's like the, there's like the bathroom in the London stage. We know eventually they're going to be adding all these stage transitions. Which kind of has me worried a little bit too, because like on the China stage, when you get when you get through the, when you get smashed to the restaurant, the entire stage basically opens up and the stage becomes super huge. Which might be like a small balance issue in the future. I don't know, we'll see once all these stages get transitions. But it just looks like another seven years of the grid boys. It looks like that's just how it's gonna go. Uh, also, Ibuki's entire story mode has been posted already on YouTube by a bunch of YouTubers. And I'll post a link to that in the video description below so you guys can check that out if you want to spoil it for yourself. It's really short and uh, it also shows off Ibuki's story mode costume as well, aka Karen's costume. 
Also, people have been taking screenshots. Event Hubs have been providing us the move list for uh, Ibuki. I know there was like a, a Japanese posting of Ibuki's move list, all in Japanese well, that I checked out before. And I was just kind of comparing it to my Ibuki breakdown video and just making sure everything is good. But I'll list some cliff notes for you guys just so you know. Um, most of the things from my breakdown video were correct, but of course I will note you guys the things that are different. Um, reloading uh, kunai's for Ibuki is apparently half circle back kick rather than quarter circle back kick like I said. And of course if you hold down the kick button, you'll be reloading more kunai's. Uh, Raida is confirmed to be a half circle back punch motion. I'm kind of surprised with this because I figured they would change it to a quarter circle back motion. But Raida has always been a half circle back as far as I know. So whatever. Um, she also has an air target combo with jumping light punch, medium kick, and another air target combo jumping hard punch, hard kick, uh, which we didn't get to see much of in the footage. Um, her V reversal is forward and three punches. I said it was probably forward and three kicks, but I was wrong. Uh, her super is core circle forward kick, no surprise, and Ibuki only has one type of air throw, uh, so she can't decide to throw it back or forward uh, like Guile can. And that's pretty much it guys, you guys are all caught up now, uh, we can expect, like I said, to get the big story mode update including Ibuki and including the money system where you can finally purchase those premium costumes, all that is coming out on the, uh, at the end of June and uh, Capcom said they're going to post another big update as well after E3 so we'll be getting more information on what we uh, can expect. And uh, yeah, basically we're just going to play the waiting game now. So this is going to be a really huge update. We're going to see how it impacts the game and if it will get more people to play in it. I don't really think it's going to get too many players back into it. But at least we know uh, now know that Capcom can focus on um, technical things in the game as well. I'm still hearing people having problems with um, connecting online, uh, netcode issues. We got the infamous uh, A-frame delay and other things that we'd like to see Capcom uh, work on. So I'm sure this is a huge weight off Capcom's shoulders to finally get this damn story mode out. Um, we probably won't be seeing Balrog until a month after because now they're one month behind, but maybe they'll be back on track because Balrog was you know, technically playable at E3. So maybe we'll get Balrog a little earlier than expected and then Capcom will be able to be right back on track. And of course, we'll be waiting for those uh, Yuri and Balrog and Jury on the PC version to get cracked so we can play those characters rather than just playing the one round in story mode. But yeah guys, have fun the rest of your day and take care. Peace out.